welcome to Rendezvous with Alicia, only on Madhouse TV. If anybody's wondering where I got that song from, a music producer named Flo Nitty from upstate Albany, New York, made me that song. When I first took out my Madhouse TV show, I wanted the song uh, Don't Stop Believing by Journey, because that's kind of my motto in life. But I was told that on YouTube that if you use somebody else's song, they'll probably pull the videos. So Flo Nitty made me that song. I actually wake up to that every morning. It's kind of my own little um, theme song, as a matter of fact. It just kind of goes with me. But uh, today we have a great show. If you watched us this morning from 11 to 12, we had WWE Hall of Famer Greg the Hammer Valentine. That show you can watch on, only on Madhouse TV on the Rendezvous with Alicia show. Today, this afternoon, we have the light, welterweight, undefeated boxer Chris Algieri, who is fighting on February 23rd at the Paramount in Huntington, Long Island, the NBC boxing match, I'll call it, of the year. And uh, Chris and I are going. So, Chris, what did you think about the, the show with Greg the Valentine? Before? It was pretty interesting. Uh, I mean, he's, he's quite a character. You know, when you, when you grow up watching somebody like that and you see him in person and you see, like, behind the scenes. I was always interested, in, like, in, even in movies, like, I like to see the behind the scenes, you know, characters, the way they are, you know, in everyday life. And... The guy's amazing, man. He didn't disappoint. You know, he was a great interview, and I mean, very, very, very nice guy. Yeah, he was a great guy. Yeah. I love the video that we played with him and um, oh, the interview video with um, Lou Albano. Lou was Albano, that his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that the was, rubber bands in his cheeks. Yeah, yeah that was a yeah. great one. What about the? Uh, you know, you finally got to see the video where he fought um, with the dog chain. The oh, dog Rowdy color. Rowdy Piper. Yeah, wasn't chain, that a man. sick that fight? Was, it was very bad. I don't care if rest, I don't care if you think that wrestling is fake. These guys take a beating in there. I mean, like he said, you know, if you think it's fake, go train as a wrestler and you see that it isn't. You know what I mean? You do take your lumps in there. And as you can see, he's, you know, he's walking around and he's, he's hurting. You know, he's got, he's got, you know, injuries from his career that he's still struggling with now. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's well, he had a fight last night. He, he had, had a fight, fight last tonight. night. He's still fighting, you know, and it's, it's, that's very impressive that he loves it that much that he's still putting his body through that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have to get him on a radio show. Now, those of you that know, uh, Chris and I have a radio show. It's called The Rendezvous Radio Show with Chris and Alicia. We started it, I think we're all going on our fourth show. Seems like yesterday, right? It Did seems we like yesterday. We've, it's actually been months in the making, and um, oh, we're yeah. going yeah. on our fourth show on Wednesday. We, I just want to say thank you for all the support. We have thousands and thousands of listeners followers. If you like our Facebook page, you'll make me very happy. It's the Rendezvous Radio Show with Chris and Alicia. You can like it on Facebook. You can catch up with everything that's going on with Madhouse TV. Chris and I are now involved. We, we have the radio show, but we're also doing Madhouse Radio. As a matter of fact, this Wednesday, our show is going to be filmed right here in this studio, and we're going to try and live stream it so that you can actually watch us do our radio show. It should it, be fun. We, we have so many laughs. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, that means you can't wear sweatpants now. Now you just got to get dressed up. I know. Be watching. I know. What yeah. am I going to do? I got to yeah. wear makeup and yeah. all you that get great all done stuff. Up. If you notice, we, we, this is our second show for today, so we did a wardrobe change. It's God forbid we were seen in the God same forbid. thing. Yeah. But anyway, so why don't we welcome our guest? I'll let you welcome well, our guest. Well, here we are today. with uh, Chris Algieri. He's got a big fight coming up mm -hmm. uh, next week. Next Saturday. Yeah. Next Saturday at the uh, Paramount mm -hmm. Huntington. So tell us about this match and, and, and the uh, the opponent that you're gonna face. Um, I'm facing uh, Jose Peralta. He's a uh, he's another up and coming prospect out there. He's from Jersey City, New mm -hmm. Jersey. He uh, he had a good amateur background. I think he's from uh, the Dominican Republic. You know, but he's you know living now in Jersey. He's uh, you know he's he's a, he's a tough task. He's gonna come to fight, and it, it should be an exciting show. Now, what's his record? He's uh, ten wins, one loss, with one six loss? knockouts. Okay. Would you think? Did you think that you you? There would be more pressure for you for you to win if uh, you both of you were undefeated. I mean, I know there's pressure to win, but do you, do you think it would be even more knowing that he was undefeated as well? Um, no, I don't think so because you know, at the end of the day, I mean, there's 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 pl plenty of times out there where you have undefeated guys and they get bumped off by guys with losses and who actually don't even have records that are that great. Yeah. You know, so the, you always got to look behind the numbers. You know, of someone's record. You never know who they fought, how they fought, you know, and, and styles make fights, so you just got to watch how the matchups are. Right, now tell us about, um, how's your training going? Training's going great. Training's yeah. going great. I actually finished up sparring, uh, you know, this week, um, all done with sparring now, just really just staying sharp, working on technique and uh, making way for the weigh-in and, 
and going to work. Now, does the training, does it change uh, weeks before? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, my strength coach, you know, Dr. Mike Camp over in Bethpage at uh, Competitive Edge Physical Therapy, he um, he believes in, in, you know, functional training and, um, you know, changing as we go, you know, throughout using periodization models, you know, where we have different cycles of, of, of training camp, you know, further out from camp, maybe we work more on like strength and balance, you know, and then towards the middle of camp is more endurance. And then the last part of camp is more of explosiveness and just speed. I did see a video of you, uh, I believe it was on Facebook, uh, you were doing some type of, uh, I used to do it actually when I played baseball, mm -hmm. the uh, the bungee cord side to side. Oh yeah, the side to side steps with the squats. Right. Yes, yeah. That's an amazing workout, I mean. Absolutely, lateral movement is really important. Mm -hmm. um, you know. It, with, from my kickboxing background, now that I just box, you know, uh, legs are still an important part, you know, of, right. of any kind of boxing match or any kind, any kind of fight sport, really. So being able to move laterally is really important, you know, and being explosive from that movement and being, you know, able, it, it's all functional movements, right. you know, it's not, we're not sitting there just pumping heavy weight, you know, because that's not going to help us in, in, you know, in a fight. We need to be functional, be strong, be athletic, be able to move and be, be quick. Before I forget, do you want to give your trainers a shout out? Any Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'd like to, you know, thank and give a shout out to my trainer Keith Trimble in Belmore Kickboxing. Um, you know, I've been with him for years now. I have another trainer actually out in um, in Las Vegas, Tim Lane. He'll be uh, Tim Bring the Pain Lane, former right. former kickboxing champ. Right. He uh, he'll be flying out here in a couple of days uh, to finish up camp. And then uh, I want to give a shout out to the guys out in Oxnard, California, at the Robert Garcia Boxing Academy, who have helped me in the past and, and with training camps. Great great place out there, great guys. And, you know, Robert is, you know, trainer of the year, you know, this yeah. past year. Now, I know we spoke about uh, your transition from kickboxing to boxing and how it was easier for you mm -hmm. because you were more of a striker as a kickboxer. Can mm -hmm. you elaborate on that? Maybe? Yeah, like, like I said, I, I was much more of a puncher when I kickboxed anyway. Yeah. So it was, it was a pretty easy transition for me. You know, the, the difference really was um, the... Uh, speed of boxing. Mm -hmm. Boxing is a quicker sport than, than kickboxing because kick techniques take a long time. You can throw more punch techniques in the time it takes to throw a single kick. Mm -hmm. On top of that, the rounds are, are longer in a boxing match, the three minutes compared to two minutes for a kickboxing match. So the speed and the endurance and conditioning were really the big big difference you know, uh, in those two sports. And really, I'm a fitness guy anyway, so it was it was a pretty easy transition you know, for me, being someone who was always in good condition and really trained on that. And then also being a dominant puncher over kicking, you know, it was a pretty, pretty, pretty simple, you know, move right. for me. Now, did you ever dabble in martial arts? I did. Actually, that's where I started. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I have a second degree black belt in Chinese Kempo. I started training when I was about nine years old with um, Bob Morrow at the U.S. Karate Academy over in Huntington Station. Oh, nice. And, uh, yeah, I trained there for years and, and, you know, grew up in that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And that's really how I got into kickboxing. We had a couple kickboxers from my dojo and my school. And I went to go see them fight when I was 13 years old, and I was like, Dad, I want to do that, yeah. you know. And he, you know, patted me on the head and did the we'll ask your mother, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, and, of course, you know, yeah. Mom, of course, would, was no way. <laughs> but uh, it, eventually I, I, I talked them into it, and, you know, that's how I got into kickboxing. At the age of 15, I had my first fight. I was a black belt by 16, you know, so this, this has been um, a, a long journey. So you went from martial arts to kickboxing to boxing. Can we see you evolving anywhere? Outside? Well, there's actually wrestling in between there, too. <laughs> <laughs> I wrestled in high school. I was looking for a sport that was close to, you know, martial arts and, sure. and, and boxing and kickboxing. Mm -hmm. And the closest thing to, to combat in, in scholastic sports would be wrestling. Right. Um, I wasn't a big guy, so football wasn't for me. I wasn't a tall guy, so basketball wasn't for me. Um, and at that time, I was, you know, wasn't really uh, a runner, so wrestling really was, was a good fit. And that's, I mean, it's, it's a tremendous sport, really teaches you a lot about training and, and, and going through tough times, because wrestling is a, is a grinder kind no, of sport. No, you know? it's oh, definitely yeah. I was asking, I was asking Chris before, not about the wrestling, about the boxing, but mm -hmm. he t told me, he said that would be a really great question to ask you. I want to just revert back to your boxing on this big fight. You're the undefeated welterweight champion. What does welterweight mean? Uh, what, okay. what, what class of league is that? Um, welterweight is 147 pounds. I'm a light welterweight, which is 140 pounds. They're considered the weight limits, so okay. you have to you have to weigh somewhat under that that right. amount, right. you know, and and for any any competition. So what if you go over a hundred? Like if, if you get to 148 pounds, like you have to weigh in, they make you drop a pound, or either you, you drop the pound, or yeah, the fight may not go on, um, and you either have to drop that pound. If you can't make it, you can either forfeit the fight. Your opponent doesn't have to take the fight, or that you get fined. Usually, you get fined either way. 
but... Do you know, I'd be in jail right now for the <laughs> amount of weight that I gained for this past couple of months. I'd be like in fat jail right now. I'd be disqualified from everything. And really? You can get fined? Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. I'd owe a million bucks mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, going back to uh, your, your your dad and stuff, uh, did you come from a boxing background? Or? Not at all. No. Not at all. I'm the I'm the first in in my family. Uh, I I I did watch fights growing up with my grandfather. Okay. My grandfather's from Argentina, and you know down in Argentina it's it's all about soccer and it's all about boxing. Right. You know, so uh, I remember watching fights with him. Really, we we there, there wasn't really we weren't really too athletic in my family. We weren't really stressing any single sport or anything like mm -hmm. that. So I watched I watched it with my grandfather, and you know. Every Saturday night, you know, we'd be watching fights. Friday night fights, Tuesday night fights, we'd be watching them, and um, that's really where where the you know my love for the sport actually blossomed. Who did you grow up uh, watching? Oscar De La Hoya was, was oh. the golden boy. Yeah. We were just told the other night that uh, last Sunday that Chris look, Chris could look a little like I Oscar don't. Yeah, I had a hat on, and uh, Evan Ginsberg, the associate, we were hanging out with Evan Ginsberg, the associate producer of mm -hmm. uh, the wrestler. Um, and he was like, he, he saw. He's the first time he sees me with a hat, and he's like. You know what? You look like Oscar De La Hoya, and I'm like, all right, I I'll guess. Take that. I'll take it. <laughs> no, he's not. I would take all it. Right, yeah. Yeah. So uh, you said you you grew up watching just, uh, Oscar De La Hoya. Now, mm -hmm. who do you fashion? Do you fashion your style around him or? Um, similar. I mean, we, we have similar builds. You know, mm -hmm. we're tall for the weight class. Uh, long guys, good jab. You know, um, and he was a he was a good boxer. You know, good good technical boxer. Mm -hmm. So I definitely do. Um, he you know really lived by his left hook and um, you know I, I think maybe I, I throw a couple more punches you know use different punches that way but you know Oscar is is such a tremendous tremendous you know athlete and someone I look up to but another another fighter that I watched growing up was uh, Alexis Arguello or someone that my right. grandfather told right. me a lot about uh, the explosive thin man from Nicaragua mm -hmm. and he's another one we actually have a similar build and he was a very technical clean fighter um, and I really you know fashion myself after guys like that you know good technique hands up good position hand position uh, I'm a I'm a technique freak when it comes to you know, you know how my boxing goes. Now, would you consider yourself a slow starter and a stronger uh, stronger finisher? It, it depends. A lot of times it depends on on the opponent that I have in front of me. You know, if, if a guy comes and brings it, you know, um, you know, boxing is, is not a sprint. You know, it's we're not we're past four rounders. You know, them fighting for ten rounds next next uh, next yeah. week. So really, I mean, if if you come out of the gate really strong. Uh, that's okay, you know, if you finish the guy off. But what happens later, in, later in a fight when you know you're getting round seven, eight, and nine, and uh, you know you you kind of emptied your gas tank in the first couple rounds. So it, it's important to you know to to know where you are in in a fight and in a ring, and to you know set the tempo and, and the pace at which you can handle. It's interesting you say that because you, it's like a chess game, correct? Absolutely, fastest you, chess game in the world. And you said you're, you're very you're you're a very cerebral mm -hmm. uh, boxer. And uh, what I wanted to ask you is, um, you also have uh, a medical degree? No, you don't have a medical degree. I have a, I have a master's, master's degree, degree in nutrition, in, in nutrition. clinical nutrition, okay. yes. Um, and it, like you said, like I, I've said in the past, uh, boxing is the fastest chess game in the world. Because mm -hmm. okay? your thinking moves ahead, you're, you're, you're sacrificing things to see what your opponent does, you're, you're looking over the landscape of, of, of the ring and, and the fight and what's happening in those rounds. And uh, really, everything's happening in, in a split second, and you know, so you really have to make your decisions, you know, and, and, and stick by them. It, it, it's very similar to to a chess game, you know. It's just much quicker. Well, speaking of stick by, we have to cut to a commercial right now. So stick by because when we come back, we're going to finish talking with Chris Algieri. And when you hear his entire background and all about this fight on February 23rd at the Paramount, which will be aired on NBC Sports, you're not going to want to miss a beat. And if you do, he may knock you out. So mm -hmm. stick right by the TV. We'll be right back. Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. We have three of the largest showrooms of safes on display and in stock. You can see and touch them in person instead of browsing a catalog. We carry gun and rifle safes, burglary safes, jewelry safes, Fire rated from a half hour to two hour. Famous name brands. We sell guard all. We sell AMSAC. The new AMSAC touchscreen. If you're ever in need of a safe, think Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. Right, Locky? That's right, Alan. One resident describes her horrifying experience when she first realized the complex was on fire. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. 
Welcome back to Rendezvous with Alicia, only on Madhouse TV. Uh, as you know, we're sitting here with undefeated light welterweight boxer Chris Algieri, who once again will be fighting on February 23rd at the Paramount Theater in Huntington. Now, what are you fighting for? The championship of the light welterweight no, division? No, this, this is a non-title affair. It's just uh, you know, matching up two, two prospects, you know, and we're oh. going to battle it out. So it's just, and it's going to be on NBC Sports, right? Yeah, it's going yeah. to be live on NBC Sports. We're going. Chris and yes. I will be there. Yes. So that'll Perfect. be, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yeah. Now, I wanted to ask you about your diet. Um, mm -hmm. You have to stay at a certain amount of weight. Mm -hmm. What does your diet consist of? Uh, really, I mean, I, I mean, I have a, a background in, in, in nutrition, mm -hmm. and um, I work as a nutritionist. So really, I model my diet. It's pretty um, pretty structured. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a very structured individual anyway, right. but my diet is something that I really, um, really focus on and really, you know, I always have my cooler with me and I always make my own food. Um, I don't really trust what other people in other places and restaurants, not that, you know, it's not healthy food mm -hmm. out there, but I like to make as much as my food as I possibly can. I'd say about 85% of the food that I actually do take in, I make myself. Um, you know, so you know exactly what you're taking in. But really, I, I, there's really no foods that I really don't eat, you know. It's just all about, you know, variety and moderation. Those are the two words that I tell my clients and tell anyone, you know, looking to, to get in shape or start a fitness program. You know, very few foods are actually very bad for you. It's just the amount that you eat, you know. So, sure. so eating a wide variety of foods, different colors and your fruits and vegetables is really important. Um, you know, stick it to whole grains, but that doesn't mean that there's no room for, for you know, white starches and things like that. Um, you know, and, and really, it's, it's, my, my diet's pretty, pretty varied. I eat a lot because I do train so much. Um, so, you know, that, that's important, too. Providing energy for the amount of, of, of effort that you do and exercise is, is very important and can be difficult, and that's why it's, it's sometimes good to seek out the help of a, a professional when it comes to making a diet and making a nutrition uh, plan because it's hard to tell how much you should eat, when you should eat, you know, but timing is very important, too. Like, when you ingest the foods that you, you do take in, um, a lot of times can have more of an effect than the actual food that you eat. So right. now Tom just lost ten pounds. I mean, he uh, you, if you saw how svelte and sexy he looks over there. <laughs> he's uh, he's doing the Atkins diet okay. now. As a nutritionist, mm -hmm. do you see? Sorry, Tom, I didn't mean to I'm spill the. Trip you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to spill the beans, but Tom, you look you absolutely you look wonderful. Is there now? There's the Atkins diet. Mm -hmm. There's the grapefruit diet. There's all these fad diets. There's slim fast. With your degree in nutrition, is mm -hmm. there any Real, I'm kind of asking for myself, but is there any really a quick way to lose to lose weight, That's or right. is it is it more um, just she real wants a magic, food? She wants a magic pill. I love a ma magic, magic bullet. Pill, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
first of all, uh, congrats, Tom, for losing that 10 pounds. That's, that's great. Um, but in terms of, of specific diets, um, really, there's no one thing for every person because mm -hmm. everyone is, it, we're all individuals. Every, everything we eat reacts in, in our bodies in a different way. Right. And it's very difficult to make one way and one set plan that's going to work for, across the board. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and as, as Chris said, there really is no magic bullet to, mm -hmm. to you know, to, to weight loss or dieting. And really, if, if there is, I would say that, like I said, variety and moderation are your keys. You right. know, eating a wide variety of foods and, and, and not eating too much of certain things. You know, doesn't mean you can't have sweets. Doesn't mean you can't have, you know, red meat. It's just how much of it you have, you know. Um, someone like you, all, you know, 92 pounds of yourself, <laughs> you don't want to eat, you know, a, a ton of food. It's not, it's not necessary. Right. You know, and then someone who's very active, someone who's a marathon runner, they might need to eat some cheesecake, right? <laughs> you know, a and, chocolate cake, uh, double exactly. chocolate. And you know, and sometimes you know, some people who are maybe at a desk all day, they don't really need as many carbs, right. you know, as, as someone who, like I said, might be a marathon runner. So um, you know, Tom using the Atkins diet, maybe Tom isn't as active, you know, as, as he used to be or currently, and um, you know, the Atkins, as we know, cuts your carbs, cuts right. your carbs down. So carbs are really um, a basis of, of, of your energy source for when you actually are exercising or moving. So if you're not being very active, you don't need that many carbs. Right. If you're being super active that day, you need more carbs. You know, so it's really, I don't think you should cut out any single macronutrient. Like, you know, f fats are bad. That's not true. You need fats. Carbs are bad. That's not true. You need carbs too. But it's, you got to kind of, you know, compartmentalize which ones you, you know, you need and when and for, and for what. What do you right. tell, what do you tell people? Like, I know when I get into eating healthy, I know I go to the Whole Foods place and it becomes very expensive. Mm -hmm. Whereas fast food is it's fast food for a reason. It's yeah. cheap and it's yeah. fast. Mm -hmm. What do you tell people when they say, I cannot afford to eat healthy? Um, re that, I, I, I don't believe, I just don't think they're trying or, or, or know where to look. Mm. Um, you know, uh, Trader Joe's is actually like cheaper than most yeah, it is regular actually, supermarkets. Yeah. You know, They're hard to find because they're, they're, they're all over the place. But at the same time, you can still do find healthy foods in a, a regular grocer. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, canned foods. Although they're a little salty, you can get low sodium versions. You can rinse them. Canned foods are very cheap, and you're getting vegetables, getting a lot of vegetables in there. So canned foods are good. Frozen vegetables have as high a nutrient content as fresh vegetables. You know, they're just frozen. You just gotta heat them up a different way. So there's always ways. Lettuce is not expensive. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you can make a salad. You can take a salad to work. You know, um, and and really tell you the truth, if you if you get a rack of of, of chicken breasts or chicken thighs, you know, it's going to be cheaper making all that for the week. You know, it's something like two or three dollars a pound. You know, mm -hmm. as opposed to you know getting a sandwich where you get you know a quarter of a pound for two dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, at a, at a fast food place. So really, if you really look behind the numbers, it's really not that much cheaper to go fast food. You know, making your own food is is a cheaper alternative. Right, let's switch gears. But let's go back to boxing. I mean, yeah, let's do that. Who is uh, who who's one of the one of your biggest challenges that you fought so far in boxing? Uh, it's not so much who, but there's there's other situations that a lot of people don't even realize. You know, you never know going into a fight. Sometimes you're injured going into a fight. You know, you have you know hand injuries or you get cut in training or maybe training camp wasn't all that you hoped it would be. Maybe you were sick. You know, there's a lot of other factors, confounding factors that can that can affect. The outcome of a fight, um, you know, I, I I would say, probably my one of my most difficult fights was actually a fight where I actually broke my hand in the fight. You know, oh. it was uh, about five fights ago. You know, I, and I, you know, a, a man's skull is very hard. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, in the in the gloves that we use are actually pretty small. You know, so at the professional ranks we use very small uh, gloves, and in my weight class we use eight ounce gloves. You know, in eight, eight ounces covering from your wrist to your fingertips is not very much in terms of padding. Right. You know, so there's there's a there's a little amount of padding on there. So you know, I, I threw a left hook. It was the end of the second round, and I hit a guy high in the head and just snapped the bone in my my metacarpal. You know, in my, in my hand. Mm -hmm. What round did this happen? The second round. Second round. The very end of the second round. I had, literally, as I was walking to my corner, it was the last punch of the round, and uh, you know, sat in my stool and. You know, my corner is talking to me, doing great, doing great, using the jab, you know, and I don't hear a thing. <laughs> I'm just thinking about my hand because I knew it. I knew it right away. I felt it, and I was like, whoop, sat down. Like, that's, that's, Did you, know. you finish the fight? Yeah, I actually ended up knocking the guy out in two rounds, two, two more rounds. Oh, yeah. nice. Now, when you, I mean, how do you, do you take the glove off, do you wrap it, or you just leave it as is and keep going? Just, you know, I'll just leave it as is. I think, once, I think yeah. once the gloves are on, you can't fights. take them off. Yeah, once the gloves are once the gloves are on, if you take them off, the fight's over. No. Uh, they'll stop it. Right. So I just are you ambidextrous? I am, yes. You are. Now, yes. outside of boxing also? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I am, uh, yeah, I'm not really dominant either way. I can write either hand, but um, I, I am ambidextrous, so that was that helped. That's so good for signing autographs. Yeah, that's what I. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what was your worst fight? Um, um, I had a tough fight. My worst probably performance was uh, I, I'm probably I fought uh, this guy James Hope down in uh, actually fought him at the Garden. And it just just was an off night. It was an off night. My training camp wasn't you know everything that I wanted it to be, and and um, you know I was going through some some managerial switches and things like that, and it just had a lot of other things going on. And plus, I was fighting in the garden, you know, so that was that was a big deal. And uh, the guy came to fight. And he was a tough kid, you know, and and I was probably down you know two rounds right out of the gate. You know, I got cut in the first round. I was bleeding. I, you know, that had never happened before. So I was bleeding at, over the eye in the first round. I lost the first round and the second round. And it was a six-round fight, so it was like I really had to you really step on the gas and, and, and make up ground. You know, I eventually ended up doing that. Hurt the guy pretty bad in the fifth round. Um, couldn't finish him, but um, ended up winning an unanimous decision. So it was, you know, it worked out all right. But that, that was that was a tough go. Now, how do you, if you could help a child, a teenager, somebody younger than you? Mm -hmm. Now, you you fight Madison Square Garden. You're, you're fighting at, at all these, these big rings. Mm -hmm. And you took a loss, a public loss in front of everybody. How mm -hmm. do you deal with that? hasn't happened yet, but, um, I mean, it, it's just like anything else. I mean, everybody loses. You know, yeah. it, it happens. You know, I was a wrestler in high school, and, and, and nobody goes undefeated, you know. Right, like, exactly. And that's actually a great thing that I, 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 I say about wrestling is, like, everybody loses, and you learn how to lose. Right, you know, That's exactly. an important thing. Um, I personally am very competitive. I don't like to lose anything ever, <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it happens, and you just got to deal with it, you know. I uh, I guess uh, I'll I'll deal with that if if, if it ever happens. Yeah, I'm sorry. Happens. I meant to say if it ever happens. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, I'll, happen, I'll yeah. deal with it then. But as of right now, we we'll just keep winning, and keep going forward. Yeah. Now, I was asking. I just have one more question. Then I'm one more. That's it. Just one more, Chris. <laughs> um, cut. When when we did we did the the, the radio interview mm -hmm. with you on the ro the rendezvous radio show with Chris and Alicia, one of the things that. Um, that that we had asked you was you also have you're going for a medical degree but you're also boxing and there comes a point like I mean you're a very handsome guy you're very good looking you. your girlfriend is a very lucky lady over there <laughs> um, yes ladies he is taken I know everybody was asking if he was single he's taken everybody his, on Facebook everybody on Facebook he, his girlfriend is gorgeous so <laughs> stay away um, being a boxer, but yet also going for your medical degree, does mm -hmm. your family ever try and say, like, come on, get out of the ring, you're going to break your nose, you're not going to look good, something could happen, when you, when you have all this other great stuff going for you, stop fighting? Absolutely. I mean, it, 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 the more that um, we've gotten more recognition and, and, and as we've you know, gotten bigger and better fights and I got more publicity mm -hmm. and, and things like this, my family's come more, uh, you know, more on board. But sure, in the beginning, it was like every fight, it's like, okay, you done yet? Are you done yet? Are you done yet? But at this point, they really do um, support me 100%, and you know we're Team Algeria, and they're they're behind me no matter what my choice is. Yeah. If if I fight for the next 10 years, they'll be with me. If uh, I quit tomorrow, they'll be with me. You know, it's 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 my family, and it's, it just is what it is. You know, their wishes and my wishes may not always be on the same line and same page, but you know, at, at the end, they're gonna you know they're gonna they're gonna cross, and we're all we're all gonna be happy. Now, like we had a, we had the great Valentine here, the wrestler, and he spoke about sacrificing and all this. What what kind of sacrifice have you gone through to get where you are today? Well, for, first, I mean, right off the bat, just thinking about, I, I I'm not in medical school yet. I'm holding off my medical, you know, my my plans of going to medical school until I'm done boxing. You know, so, you know. Most likely, if, if I had just gone through college and just gone through my, my master's degree, and I would be in medical school now, you know, and, and in a couple of years be practicing, you know, but that's not happening right now because I'm, I'm, I'm taking in this time as I'm young to be a fighter um, and to, to be a champion and, you know, and, and look at the next career after that. But, uh, you know, on top of that, also just financially, you know, you, 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 instead of working like a lot of my peers are and, and you know, I, I have my friends who are buying houses and things like that. Uh, I'm not there yet, you know. I'm not there yet. I, I've I've kind of pulled back to, ch to chase my dreams, you know, and and that's really what it is. This is this is I'm chasing dreams right now. So, not to mention training camps and you know and 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 more on like a, a physical level and and a, and a right now level, you know, training is hard. Training is hard. And we talked about like before, working out is hard. You working know, just getting on a regular workout routine is hard. Sure. Now imagine that you have to do it, and that's your job, and then you have to go and show up and you have to fight in front of thousands of people against another person who's doing the same thing. 
you know. So that, that that's another um, another sacrifice, another difficult part of the sport. And also we travel and move and go away to camps. And there are times where I'm, I'm away from my family for four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks at a time for for a training camp, you know. And and here I'm all alone in a hotel room, and all I do is go to the gym. That's my job, you know. And it, 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 it's tough, but again, I love the sport of boxing, and this is the, this is what it takes. And sacrifice. You gotta you gotta sacrifice big things to to get big things. Yeah. Now you also, besides boxing, what do you what do you have going on? Uh... Right now, currently, um, um, a couple partners of, of of mine and and myself have uh, have a website called My Competitive Life, mycompetitivelife.com, and really, it's just it, it we're building it to be um, you know the premier site and and place to go to for fitness, nutrition, training, rehabilitation, and health you know, worlds and just bring it all together so you have a, a, a resource of information that you can go to and the kind of questions that you ask me about diet and nutrition you can go and check out over there. You know, that you can contact any of us at any time. You know, my partner is a, one of them is a doctor of physical therapy, Michael Camp, and the other one is uh, is a multiple master's degree um, owner of uh, and Tony Ricci who's a, a nutritionist and, and just a brilliant guy altogether, a great public speaker. But um, you know, we, we just kind of put our, our heads together, and we we've crossed paths throughout, the, you know, as we come up through the careers, and we had this great idea about making this website. And we're, we're building it up now, and that's something that we put a lot of time into when I'm not in the gym. So is it like a forum, and also do you is it like a is there like a shop where you can uh, buy we, stuff? Absolutely, or? you know, there's we write a lot of articles, a lot of video content. Uh, we cover a lot of uh, a lot of professional athletes in the area. And, um, you know, we, we field questions, we have forums, there's, there's people can ask, there's, you know, there's a Facebook page of people who are we're very interactive with, with mm -hmm. you know, the people who are actually following our site. Um, you know, we do, we're actually built, working on some products right now. You know, we have t-shirt lines and, and hats and things like that. So it's, it's you know, it, it, it's growing. Is it's, there like an Ajiri shirt that I can wear? Uh, there is, week? actually. I was, uh, my friend who's over here is actually, uh, yeah. you know, finessetheworld.com over there. Yes. He, uh, he he is my designer and, and, and makes the Team Algeri shirts. So I'll definitely have some cool. shirts for you guys. Oh, that would yeah, be great. Definitely, I definitely want to wear a shirt. Well, we are going to have to cut to a commercial. When we come back, we'll finish talking about Chris's great website. And I think... Chris Melendez has a little surprise for Chris Algieri when we come Thank back. You. Stay yeah. tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Clicking this thing will get us online. Well, try dragging it. Mm. Faster. You're just a mouse click away from a better way to rent movies. Blockbuster Total Access. Movies through the mail plus movies through the store. One low price. Here's the problem. We forgot to plug it in. Oh, don't even think about it. Get a free trial at your Blockbuster store or Blockbuster.com. This is Beth. Hi. Hi. Oh, congratulations. When are you due? I'm not pregnant. Oh, look at that. Excuse me. You're totally thin. You look very sexy. For life's bleachable moments, all it takes is three quarters of a cup. When your cable's on the fritz, you get frustrated. When you get frustrated, your daughter imitates. When your daughter imitates, she gets thrown out of school. When she gets thrown out of school, she meets undesirables. When she meets undesirables, she ties the knot with undesirables. And when she ties the knot with undesirables, you get a grandson with a dog collar. Don't have a grandson with a dog collar. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. When you're cap cool. Welcome back to Rendezvous with Alicia. I hope you're enjoying this. We've had a double header today. From 11 to 12, Chris and I were here with Greg the Hammer Valentine, WWE Hall of Fame wrestler who sold out Madison Square Garden. And right now we are honored to be with the Light welterweight, yes, yes. undefeated boxer, Chris Algieri. It She's took me a month to get that down pat because I kept messing it up. 
And then I had to hear it from him all the time, so I had to make sure that I got that sound pat. I stay in my sleep now. Oh, I, 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 I said my hat to you. That's yeah. tough. We were on the radio show, and uh, she's like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the, the welterweight champion, I'm like, uh, I want him to be a champion, but he's not a champion not yet. Not there yet. <laughs> not there yeah. yet. But, Thank you. But. Uh, yeah. but uh, before before we went to break, uh, I was asking about the t-shirt line, if mm -hmm. there was a team on Jerry. Well, I want to present you with a team. I'm a fireman. Oh, okay. FDNY. Nice. I want to present you with a team FDNY sweater. In the All right. That's, that's awesome. There you go. So when you're training, you can wear that. When you're All running right. outside. That's great. Check this out. That's your house, ladder, ladder 143. 143. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Chris. The House of Love, ladder 143. Remember back I in the day, I, I don't know, I, you're 28, but back in the day, the pager days, when you put 143 means I love you. Yes. So we call it the Love House. Yeah. Okay. All right, all right. Yeah. Yeah, thank we you. put that to the side for you. All right. Appreciate it. So uh, going back, uh, <clears throat> we had a question on Facebook uh, mm -hmm. during a radio interview, and someone's, uh, someone asked, uh, what do you say to people when, when they tell you that you haven't been challenged? Mm -hmm in a fight uh, in your career as of, as of yet? We actually kind of touched on that a little bit. Like I was saying, there's other, there's other things besides your opponent that can, that can challenge you in there. Um, you know, like training camps and, and, and traveling and managerial stuff and then getting cut in a fight, being hurt, things like that. You know, I think I've been through a lot of those things so far in my career and I've always found a way to win. You know, and really, if you and we also talked about looking past the numbers of guys' records. You know, the guys' records that I fought may not be, you know, pristine undefeated records with a lot of with a lot of undefeated you know guys in there but the guys that i fought are all tough sure. you know then they've fought tough guys and they mm -hmm. fought a lot of undefeated guys and they've been in there and they're you know they, they've been good tests and i think that my my matchmakers and, and my managerial team has moved me along the, along the right way without giving me a bunch of easy guys and a bunch of easy stiffs to knock out and mm -hmm. to look good against. You know, I've had the I've had the I've had the fight each fight. You know, leading up to this, and and I think that's going to prepare me well for this fight as well as for the fights in the future. Beautiful. Now, if you know, like, if your manager knows, let's say you're fighting Chris in the ring, mm -hmm. and you know he's got a bum knee, or not a knee because it's boxing, maybe a bum elbow, a right bummy. elbow. Okay. Would your manager say he's got a bum right elbow? Go for the arm. Go for the arm, and get you to get him where you know. At he's the end got of the day, injury? this is a competition, and you know when it comes down to it, any any competitive advantage that you can you can get or take, you might you might as well do it. You know, this is this is uh, this is the big show and the big league, so. You know, it, it's it's like any sport. You know, a anyone's gonna do that. Anyone's gonna take advantage when they can. Right. You know, and it, it's legal. It's not like it's an illegal thing. You know, injuries happen. If it happens that you know about it, go you know, for it. Go for it. Now, growing up, did you watch the Rocky movies? Of course. You did. Of course. It, do, do they seem now that you're living the life? Uh, do they seem real to you looking back? No, I mean, <laughs> I used to get that a lot. Like, you know, people be like, you, you're you're a boxer, really? You don't look like one. I'm like, yeah, no, like like Rocky. I'm like, <laughs> not so much, not so much like Rocky. I'm like, do I look like Rocky? <laughs> um, yeah, it's funny when you when you go back and you know watch those fight scenes and the way you know they're ki like killing each other. Yeah. <laughs> big, you know, big throwing yeah, bombs and, and every punch is a is a haymaker and they're all landing, you know, super flush and you know fights aren't like that. You know, like and it's 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 hard to watch if you know if you really pictured real people punching each other like that. Yeah. But you know. It, it's it's movie and it and it's and it's you know it's an art form in a way to you know watching films like that, um, but the storyline is, is is great. A guy coming up you know that way. You know I didn't experience that it, it that way, but I know you know some other guys have. So it, it, it's true to form in that sense. Now do the do boxers like after years of boxing really get some brain damage if they're beaten the head a lot of times? It it it, it can, absolutely does happen. It can happen. Um, I mean it does happen. You know, but so do football players. You know, a lot of football players are coming out now. Concussions are becoming a, a really big focal point of study. Big topic. Yeah, mm -hmm. really big topic right now. And, um, you know, as we're learning more and more about our bodies and, 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 and our brains and how they're affected by the things that we do, I think more and more tests are going to come out, which are going to help. You know, New York State is actually really great about testing us. You know, we get comparative brain scans every two years, so you can compare the damage over the years. And, you know, that, I think that really helps and, and, and you know, being stringent and, on the medical testing is super important for the sport. It really is. There's, there's no room to just let things slide, you know, yeah. especially when it comes to the brain because we, we can't fix it. Now, knowing your love for boxing, what if, what if a doctor told you today that you can never box again? It is what it is. You know, that, yeah. that's, you know that's, that's kind of a, a tough route in life and things like that happen. And if that's the case, if it's, if it's you know, my life and my <clears> brain are boxing, I got I to gotta go with my life and my brain, you know, because there's life after boxing. You know, all of us are. Even the guys who, you know, they say they have nothing else. There's still life after boxing. You can't box forever. You can't fight forever. You can't do anything forever. You know, but, um, you know, that, that, that would be a hard truth to, to swallow. But 
Um, again, that's something that I hope doesn't happen anytime yeah. soon or ever. Are you sponsored by anybody? Uh, I have a couple. I have a couple sponsors right now. Um, Kings Avenue Tattoo is a is a is a local sponsor of mine. Um, you know, they're, they're a great group of guys and some of the best in the world at what they do. Yeah. Um, Finesse the World Clothing is another sponsor of mine that, um, you know, they actually do the Team Algeria shirts. Oh, okay. Which I will present to you guys on Friday night. Oh, nice. um, uh, K&S Tree Service, which uh, is, a, is a friend of mine's uh, tree service company. They do all tree removal and things like that and uh, did a lot of work during the Sandy, Sandy tragedy and hurricane. Um, yeah, th th those are my sponsors uh, right now, you know. Now, we just had that big snowstorm, and you were in Huntington. We were supposed to air the show um, mm -hmm. last Saturday, but you were stuck in three feet of, yeah. of snow. Now, being, you know, a boxer in this health nut, did everybody expect you to do all the shoveling to unbury their cars? You know, it's so stuff? funny you mention that, because I, I pictured when, <laughs> when you said that we weren't able to uh, come on the show because they had three feet of snow, whatever. Um, I was picturing you... Like Rocky running in the snow. That's what I was thinking. You know, I was just like, that's yeah. the picture. Uh, yeah, that's the picture. I said, Jerry's taking advantage of this. I yeah. know he is. He's training. He's got the beard going. Yeah, he's, he's got, got the, the beard hood. going. Yeah, the yeah. Hood. Running yeah. through the waist high yeah. snow. Yeah. No, I, I, I actually did not shovel at all. I was like, you know what? I'm fighting in two weeks. I got to rest my, my arms, my legs. I'm not pulling my back out. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah. You know, it's one of the other reasons I couldn't make it. <laughs> yeah, no, we said that's fine. I mean, yeah. we, we understood. I was stuck with Chris for four days yeah. in Queens, and yeah. we got a lot of work done. It was torturous. So it was torturous. <laughs> for him, it was torturous. Sorry. For him. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> we got so much work done that was really productive for mm -hmm. us. It ended up being a blessing mm -hmm. and stuff. But we felt bad. I mean, I was on the phone with Tom, I think, up till midnight. I'm like, do I call it? Do I, do I, do I, do I call it's it? Say, like cancel week, it? Yeah. And Tom's like, wait till the morning, and you were like, wait till the morning mm -hmm. so we did but we talked about it, it was, all week yeah, that was it, a was, it was a mess crazy. getting up saturday morning it was like just a whitewash especially up by me it was just it was up there it was pretty bad yeah you mind. guys had three feet over there that hole like that god. north shore of long island by yeah, you it was bad. that were you know really high how did you guys do during hurricane sandy i was actually in california at the time i was uh i was in training camp out in california in oxnard mm -hmm. i was there i literally missed the entire storm missed the mm -hmm. whole thing um which was uh, a blessing on for me, but you know my family. I kept in checking in on them. We did, did all right. They were out of power for almost two weeks, you know. Um, but no, no real, da real damage. Oh, okay, good. You know, that's good. So you have the fight coming February twenty third, mm -hmm. and who are you fighting again? Jose Peralta from Jersey City. Now how, we said before they just picked any. You guys are both in the same the league. The, you both weight light class. welterweight. In the same weight class. Uh, in the same. Thank you. Weight. Class. I, I'm getting it. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, getting. It. I'm getting. We're it. we're in different promotional <clears throat> companies, and uh, a lot of times what happens is, is they will co-promote a show together. Two promotional okay. companies, so they match up us. You know two prospects from, from each company and then, you know, we fight right. each other. Uh, you know, each promotional company has a, has a matchmaker who, just, you know, figures out who's fighting who and there's a lot of negotiating back and forth. And But, you know, with this fight, this is actually a pretty easy fight to make because uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know Jose personally, but I'm sure, you know, he's, he's, he wants to progress his career and the opportunity came up and, sure, let's, let's go. You Are know? you going to find out if he has any injuries or anything and you're going to... Probably not. You know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm, I'm planning on giving him some instead of finding him out. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> very nice. So let me ask you a question. Uh, you're from Huntington. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when you're out and about, do people recognize you? Do they, do they roll out the red carpet for you? Sometimes here and there, uh, people, I, I'm, I, I actually look different a lot because of my facial hair or my yeah. haircuts during fights. You know, I've had fights where I, I had long hair. I've had fights where my head was shaved. Right. You know, so I, my look changes a lot in that way. So a lot of people don't recognize me as much as you might think. Um, but it definitely does happen. And, uh, you know, when, when I'm in Huntington, you know, local, local kid, I don't go down there too much because I don't want to yeah. take too much advantage of it. But uh, a funny story is this morning... Um, you know, my, my girlfriend's cousin texted me and she's like, I was hanging out last night. And this is in, this is in L.A. Right. And she's like, I was hanging out with these guys last night. And they love you. <laughs> she was like, it was so cool to, to you know that these guys knew you from you know all the way over there. So it, you know it, it's you have it, a it's bromance growing. with you. Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bromance going. A little man crush action, bi coastal man crush. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did you meet your girlfriend during a fighting? I did. A fight, like during boxing, or did she know you were a boxer when you met? Or? No, no, no. It's a funny story. She met at one of my fights. She didn't see me fight. She worked at the venue, and oh, okay. I came out and came downstairs. And you know, we uh, a friend of mine and her were, were, were talking. They worked together, and I uh, came over and was talking to them. And you know, and then you know, later on, later in the night, where you know, we're out somewhere else, and and she, you know, she's like, "Who's this guy?" But everyone keeps coming up to and talking to him. So then she came up and talked to me, and we're talking. And she's like, "Oh, what brings you here?" I'm like, "Fight." She's like you, and she's like, "Yeah, and I work over there." And like, "Yeah." 
She said, you know, how were the fights? I was like, I don't know. I didn't really see them. You know, I was fighting in them. She was like, you what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, it was the main event. She was like, did you really? Did you win? I was did like, you yeah. Get hurt? I, I was mean, like, I had a bruise, yeah. you know, right there. <laughs> but other than that, you know, so that, you know, that, that's, that's how it works. So she, she didn't even see me fight, you know. Or no, I was a fighter. When but but she, met. but you met at the match. So mm -hmm. you heard that, ladies. Again, he's a taken man. So you can stop emailing Chris and I about him because <laughs> Chris Algeri is obviously taken. We are going to cut to a commercial break. When we come back, Chris Melendez is putting on the gloves for moving the table, oh, and we are going down with Tom know. Mealy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to end the show, finishing up uh, this this awesome hour with Chris Algeri. Yes. Freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the Bounce Dryer Bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer, and I never have to remember. Oh! Oh! Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful, it sells itself in other people's commercials. You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like power. Yeah, I do. Power! Try this routine to feel fresh and clean. Pair Charmin Fresh Mates with your Charmin. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray is too powerful to stay in its own commercial. That's right. Ba -ba 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 power. Welcome to Formula Auto Wash, where every day is a great day for a car wash. Open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Detailing packages for every budget, starting out at $29.99. 100% hand wash and detail centre. Hogs hair and microfiber brushes and mitts. Proudly using Ecolab Blue Coral soaps and waxes. Formula Auto Wash has served the community for over 30 years. Senior discounts all day, every day. Ladies' Day Wednesday, $3 off any wash. Early bird discount Monday through Thursday till 9.30 a.m. Check out our website, formulaautowash.com. Hi, I'm Chris Algeria here. I'm at Madhouse TV. We had a little technical difficulties with Tom in the back there. He uh, he tried to step to me, so now I'm going to be introducing the show. But <laughs> <laughs> you ran into your fist. Welcome back to the show, guys. Uh, I'd like to introduce a friend of mine. He's actually uh, this is Ace Finesse of you know Finesse the World Clothing. You can introduce yourself. Yeah, like he said, I'm Ace Finesse. I run a movement called Finesse the World, and what it is is a clothing line which we call Uniform for the Formless. We have a music group, which we call the Dub Life Outsiders. Um, we do philanthropy work, which we've collaborated with the American Cancer Society. We've done work with, um, with Robin Crespo, who runs, who runs a movement called Code Purple, which supports um, malaria in Uganda. Um, we've done work with Sickle Cell Support. And um, yeah, Chris Algeri, he's like a great face of our movement just because of, of his lifestyle. You know, he, uh, He's a very inspiring individual and very healthy. And um, I'm actually working on a documentary of him called Champion Lifestyle, which will be, um, it'll be ready and I have no set release date, but it'll be great. I've been following him all over with a, uh, with a camera on him. So I've gone to California with him and yeah, I just film him and you get to, you'll get to see his lifestyle. I'll tell you what, in the making. Yeah, I'll tell you what, when, when you guys are ready to, uh, to present that, we'd, we'd love to have you on again. All right, you know, it'd be nice. We could have like a little premiere party here for you yeah, guys. Yeah, that'd I mean, be fun. that'd be sweet. 
for sure. I mean, if, if you give us the opportunity. You know, yeah, you know, indeed. You I might agree. have other ideas, but... This guy does amazing yeah. video editing, so I'm sure it's going to come together and be a, a, a really epic, epic thing. Right. So now, right now, he he, uh, he uh, designed the t-shirts for you, right? Yes, Team he, Algeri? he designed the, the, the Team Algeri t-shirt. Oh. He does for all the fights, um, you know, he mixes up his, his you know, decals and, 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 and emblems and... Uh, he really is a genius with you know design and things like that, so it it it, it should be a great. I haven't seen the finished product yet, but we should be having yeah, it next, shirt next that, week. That I designed is called the um it's called the More to Come shirt. So um it's him, you know, at the top of the shirt, mm -hmm. and then below it it just has like a tally bar, and then for each fight the tallies go up. So right now it's at 15, nice. and the shirts that I've made for this one are at 16 because nice. we do not expect losses. Excellent. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you have, you you have pink leave? shirts for her? Oh, I love pink. A pink one, we can make you a pink one. <laughs> <laughs> they're, getting, yeah. they're getting made this week, so Sweet. we'll hook you up. Thank you. How did you guys meet? We've known each other for for years now. I've, I've I mean, what? It's got to be since shoot, I was about nine, nine or ten. ten. Yeah, so it's yeah. it's been about ten, fifteen years now. Wow. Yeah. You guys are the same age? No, no, I'm I'm, I'm a couple years older. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 He started training me, uh, and the first thing he taught me was um, self restraint. He, uh, my mother had him uh, kickboxing training. I mean, now we just do boxing. But the first thing he taught me was this right here, and it basically means that with great power comes great responsibility, and that you got to keep your flame frozen. I do that to so, Chris over here. Yeah. I gotta keep him in line he all does, the time. Yeah, I do the same thing. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah, but um, what you have dub? You talking about EDM music? The dub, dub stuff? Oh no, no, no. It's just a, it's just our, our title. You know, it's a music group called the Dub Life Outsiders. What it basically means is that. We strive to live outside of the dub life, which is the W worldly life. So it's another inspiring group of individuals that we are here to broadcast. Because we're always looking for wonderful guests to come on our radio show. You should come on like next this week we're booked, but yeah. maybe the following we'll week. I'll be also trying information. Like I said, uh, uh, our radio station uh, show is basically for those who don't have the opportunity otherwise to promote their stuff mm. to come on. It's it's a it's a free forum. And everybody's invited, you know? That'll be awesome. I really appreciate it. Do you play in the band? Or? Yeah, I do. I'm what? an artist and I'm an engineer, so uh, I mix down music and make videos and stuff like that. Just do what, you know, like he said, what you don't have the opportunity to do yourself. Uh, you have no choice to be self-sufficient, so... Now, what are your links? Where can we find you? Well, finessetheworld.com. It, it'll drop on March 15th. It's, you know, it's been up for years now, but we're re-renovating it. So on March 15th, it'll be back up, and you'll see the clothing and the music and... And Chris uh, Jerry's face all over, <laughs> you know, so. That's awesome. So Are you going to be at the fight on the yeah, 25th? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we'll see you then. So, Chris, going forward, what can we expect uh, from you this during really, this fight? This should be a big year. I mean, th th this fight is uh, is going to be a, a, a springboard and a stepping stone, um, you know, for, for many big things. You know, really, it's, it's, it's giving me a national spotlight so I can uh, show, you know, the nation what I do, you know, and go out there and, and, you know, all the hard work that I've been putting in in the years and, and, and in the gym is going to show next week on the 23rd and then from there we're just looking to to really break out this year now this is the first time it's going to you're ever going to go national correct right this is going to be a on a, on a major network sure. on a major network mm -hmm. and is this going to be aired live or this will be live that night on nbc sports cool well, and that's next week so next get week. your tickets yeah. are there still tickets available there's some but it's 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 going to be a sellout crowd for sure for sure. So if you don't have them yet, definitely get them now. It's at the Huntington Paramount. It's a beautiful venue. It's probably the premier uh, venue on Long Island for, for boxing, and it's become a, a premier venue for any kind of musical acts and, and a lot of different shows, and it's it's really, really nice on Fight Night. Can you plug your Facebook and your website? Everything is just at my name, chrisalgieri.com. Uh, my Facebook is, is, is that as well, Chris Algieri. My Twitter handle is at Chris Algieri. So if you know my name, then you can, you can find me. Oh, wow. So, I guess, I mean, is there anything else you want to plug before we end the show? No, I think it's good. I want to plug Madhouse TV. You guys oh, are great. You guys uh, have been, thanks, been Chris. excellent. And the, the, the rendezvous show is, is really is really a great it's thing. Take, yeah, it's taken off, and uh, I, she's been at this for a while, and mm -hmm. she just invited me to do it, and she's worked really hard at it. And, you know, you could tell that the show's been a hit um, so far. The three shows, we had great, great, great um, guests. Mm -hmm. And the view, the, you know, the listenership is, is amazing. So we got to thank people like you that come on, you know, to, to make that happen. Because actually your show was one of the highest uh, viewed uh, listen shows that we had in the Great. three. And you know we had all those technical problems, too. Yeah, in the beginning, The yeah. first 15 minutes, we had, it was nothing but technical problems. You had to see me problems. running around trying to fix everything. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was oh, going crazy. You guys kept it cool. It was pretty smooth. So. Yeah, it went good. We, th we thank you. Yeah, so once it. again, we have 
light welterweight boxer, undefeated, Chris Algieri. His Very fight is February 23rd. I believe it's 7.30 p.m. He is the NBC Sports headliner, headliner at the Paramount. Yes. So if you haven't gotten your tickets, they're almost sold out. Get your tickets now. This is going to be a great fight. Chris is going national on a major network, NBC Sports. Anyway, we love you. Thank you for tuning in. For Chris and I, we've thank been you. here all day. We had Let's our two on. shows thank today. You. And we just thank you guys for coming on. Thank you, Chris, again. again. And you can tune in Wednesday evening from 6 to 9. The Rendezvous Radio Show will be airing live again from Madhouse Studios on Madhouse Radio. So tune in. Thank you, everybody. Love you all. Is the right time?